Uh, yep. And I'm just going to make sure everything's working correctly, and then we'll put up the pole and... The sweet lands are working properly, yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yep. How to paint in an Amazon forest. How to... Really? I don't think that's what we're doing here. No, that's what the heat feels like, though. Oh, right, yeah, how to... <laughs> A, How to paint in a tropical, tropical um, climate. A sauna. Yeah. We're painting in a sauna. In a sauna. In a sauna. It's a hot day here. It is. Yeah, it is a hot day. All right. I'll, I'll put up a pole, and um, I can actually hear myself and you. So I'm going to plug this there. And then... Uh, all right. So, dude, I'm going to let you um, carry carry this because um, I'm a lazy ass, and you know this. Okay. Welcome to How to D&D. Um... I am back, David Bailey, here to um, paint a, um, a zombie beholder today. Um, I hope you enjoy the stream, and I hope you can stay around long enough to put up with all of the crap we're going to talk about, because that's what we're going to talk about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, lots, yeah. Of, lots of crap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, dude, what did you do to, to prep this? Uh, just a zenithal prime, so you painted it uh, like a, a really dark grey, and then put a, like a white highlight over the top of it, so you can sort of get the shadows in. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to basically be thinning down my paints, um, as um, as Duncan Rhodes would be really happy. Two thin coats, I think, that's his motto. Um, more, white but way thinner than that. <laughs> um, thin, thin coats, um, so it's almost transparent. And you can get um, lots of colour on there. Um, and we want lots of colour on this one because it's a zombie, so you want all sorts of dead fleshes and rotting this and that. Um, so I'll make him as rotty as possible. Well, okay. <laughs> right, you make him as rotty as possible. Yep, yep. And <clears throat> hello, Dan. How's it going? Dan is a patron. Welcome to the live stream, buddy. Also a moderator. Uh, so today is all about uh, painting miniatures mm. and um, for those of you who haven't figured it out uh, while David is trying to paint miniatures I'll be trying to talk to him so he's going to try to focus on the painting while I have ADHD and I'm terrible at multitasking so multitasking it's, it's going to be lots of fun oh, it's going to be hard work it's going to be hard work yeah. Uh, so he, yeah he's going to try not to get distracted which is going to be very difficult plus he's going to be moving around constantly <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he not, just loves to he's, he likes to challenge me I see Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, so that you understand, it's very hot here in New Zealand right now. And in my <laughs> office, since the door is closed and we've got the lights, three lights pointed at us, it feels like we're in a... What sauna. Is it? A sauna. Yeah, it's a sauna. Hello, Andy. How are you? So, uh, David is actually using... You're using a wet palette, is that right? Yeah, I'm using a wet palette, yep. Um, it's just to keep uh, keep the paint wet, basically. <laughs> <laughs> because it's just so um, so hot, uh, especially with acrylic paint, uh, it just dries out just almost instantly. So this is one of the problems for with uh, painting I find in summer when I'm in New Zealand is that um, the the sound of water that you hear. That's I'm not urinating in the office, okay? Uh, <laughs> what 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 hydrating, happens? Hydrating, yeah, office. hydrating. Trying to stay. You, we have to hydrate. Hydrate. We're going to be drinking a lot of water. <laughs> so, so the problem I find in summer trying to do live stream painting in my office is it's so hot, even with the door open. When I was able to do that, which I really can't now, uh, oh, no. is, it was still so hot that the paint would literally dry on the brush, and so therefore. You'll f I find it very difficult to do. So I, so David is going to use a wet <laughs> so palette. He gets, so he gets his brother in to do it for him. That, that's exactly right. Yeah, so yeah. when it's too hard for me, I get somebody else to do it. Yeah. Um, so I thought what we would do is uh, we would talk about the Beholder Zombie and some of the lore behind uh, this creature and the monster itself a little bit maybe uh, before we are not allowed to anymore if Wizards oh, of the Coast puts in those restrictions. I'm, I'm playing with you people. Um, I mean... I'm, I'm serious to a certain degree, but I've, there's also there's always some hidden meetings in everything that I say. <laughs> <clears throat> I have this nasty tendency of saying something, and you just don't know whether I'm serious or if, I, or if I'm if I'm just playing with you. <laughs> uh, so, and I can assure you, I, I like to play with people. Um, right, so <laughs> that's why you're a dungeon master. <laughs> that's right. It, it's all about uh, messing with people's heads yeah. and uh, showing your hand. It's like a magician, right? Uh, you, you, as a magician, you you have to show them one thing, but you're actually doing something else. 
What's yeah. up, Wizard of the Coast seems to be doing lately? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I so, don't know how well. <laughs> so the section um, that we have here on the zombie, when zombies aren't like um, a copyright thing, like zombies are zombies, like yeah. but the zombies or the beholder zombie itself is something that is it's it's very sort of narrow in its um, uh, concept. Um, so it is still a zombie as such. The only difference is that it doesn't have like arms and legs. It is basically a zombie that has died and uh, uh, behold that's died become a zombie or been zombified. And then of course somebody can control it. Um, but like all zombies, if you lose control of it, it will go haywire. It's bad enough when those things are alive. So they can do quite a few um, nasty things. They usually work for sort of like a dark sinister um, servant of some kind usually a necromancer who's in view and uh, imbued some sort of um, undead nature into it and um, <clears throat> and it will often follow sort of pre-programmed instructions uh, I guess the interesting thing about the um, the uh, the franchise that will sh um, shall not be named um, <laughs> Is is that uh, zombies in the brand that shall not be named are only really interested in just killing living creatures, and so if you get struck by one or bitten by one, uh, one they don't seem to bite; they just slap you to death. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, but a beholder is not going to slap you because they're not no hands, so and it's not going to slap you with an eye tentacle, is it? But it could zap you with an eye tentacle. It could could zap you with an eye yeah. tentacle. Exactly. I think the other thing that I find interesting is, well, okay, so it's just they're just after, you know, things that are dead. But you know, if, if you get sort of bitten by a beholder zombie, you're not going to turn into a beholder zombie or a zombie as such or anything like that. Mm. It's kind of dumb and dull. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because let me think about zombies and like you know brains. I want yeah, they your, eat brains. your brains. Yeah, eat your brains. Well, that's what I always think of as zombies. They want to eat your brain. Eat your brains. It's, I, I feel like that goes far enough back, like traditionally. I feel like zombies should be eating your brains. Yeah. Um, but also, so why does a beholder not eat your brain? Well, uh, maybe it does, and if it doesn't, maybe you can just make it eat your brain. Well, aren't they? Because they're all about intelligence and stuff, aren't they? So wouldn't they want to eat your brain if they're a zombie? Wouldn't well, that just make more sense? They're, they're, they are essentially just like a giant floating beach ball or a head, aren't they? Yeah, and they and they they crave knowledge and and um. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what they crave when they did though, other than I would have thought a brain maybe because but then they need a brain. They need a brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Replacement brain. Yeah. Re re replacement flesh. <laughs> yes. Just keep operating. Yeah. 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 You know, otherwise it just keep degrading till there's nothing left. Yeah. That little floating eyeball. And then you wind up with a, a beholder skeleton. Yes. Which I have painted one of those. That's right. That was the was it death tyrant <sighs> yes. beholder. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yep. yep. Which is cool. It's a really cool miniature. But uh, I don't think anybody was terribly interested, which I don't understand, but okay. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Much to my surprise. I think. I thought it was a cool model, for sure. I thought it was awesome, too. The I guess the other thing I was thinking was like, it would be nice if you, could, if, you know, a, a beholder zombie could actually impart some sort of disease or a curse. Yeah, a curse. Yes, that would be quite cool. Yeah, I, I think this is definitely an area that needs to be explored with um, a creature like this. Yeah. Um, I've actually used a a beholder zombie in my games. Um, the because the premise of a zombie also is like if you get killed by a zombie, then you turn into a zombie, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's inherently passing a curse on. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the the I mean, whether it's a disease or a curse, I, I think it would be fun to do it that way. The other thing I was thinking is that... Um, it would mess with your party. Yeah, yeah, it would definitely mess with your party. So I decided <laughs> to mess with my party one day with a beholder zombie. <laughs> oh, I'm, not, I'm so surprised, Fred. How's it going, Leonard? Greetings, how are you doing? So, um, yeah, so as, as it does happen, uh, quite often I, I do mess with my, my, my group. Uh, <laughs> and, and so they wound up encountering a, a beholder zombie that was being used as a mount by an illithid. 
which is a mind flayer in Dungeons and Dragons, the aforementioned brand that will shall not be named. Oops, oh, hang on, yes. I just said it. Voldemort. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so maybe we'll just call it Voldemort. Uh, yeah, Voldemort. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this this beholder zombie was basically the mount, and I called them Master Blaster. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> let me guess, Mad Max. Three. Three. Yeah. Beyond Thunderdome. That's the one. Yep. That's the one. Master Blaster. Of course, who do you think was Master? You? No, no the Illithid sitting on the on the um, Beholder Zombie. Yeah, well, he, yeah, of course he has to control it, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. And then Blaster was, of course... <laughs> Blasting things. Yeah, yeah, that was the, the Beholder Zombie. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. Uh, my players freaked out. And um, <laughs> oh, why? Well, why? They actually managed to deal with it, but the, I think the initial um, fear of the combination of the two was like, oh dear. Yeah. And the fact that um, um, I'd actually taken a uh, a living um, beholder that they had killed and turned him into a. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it so they like... had to fight it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, yeah. <laughs> Just when you think, no, wait, it's back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I've done this a few times where things have been absolutely troused, and I've decided, oh, I want to mess with them again, and I've brought <laughs> it back as a zombie. It's, there's been a there's been a necromancer so that's been just sort of a bit bored and just wandered by, and like, oh, look, dead kraken. Oh, kraken. Yes, I did. I ha had an undead. Um, Kraken in my game at oh, one point too. Wicked. I do this a lot. I do this a lot. There's a lot of undead things. So you can. You can, can you get a Kraken miniature? You can. Oh. It, but it's it's, it's not it, big enough though, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, how big does a Kraken when you think about it? It's well, bigger yeah. than a ship, isn't it? Really? Yes. So it's yeah. It's going to be large. It has to be. It has to be large. Mm. How's it going? What do you got here, Andy? Uh, you're okay with D and D zombies just um, doing the um, the bidding of the master, mindless attacking and so forth. Anything on site, uh, which is yeah, yeah, fair enough. Look, you run it however you want to run it. Um, I just like the idea that suddenly uh, my party have to contend with the fact that they have to get rid of a curse or a disease that will potentially turn them into something else. Uh, just <laughs> just because it then throws them into um, a bit of a oh, we've got to be careful uh, around this thing. Yeah, yeah. Do you need towel, paper towels? Okay, yeah. so do, yeah, there you go. Um, <clears throat> so David, what sort of paint are you using here? Vallejo Game Ear. It's already thinned down, so that's a goblin green. Okay. And it's going to be a lot of greens and khakis and stuff that are going to be going over with it, or highlight it and stuff. Right. I'll do a couple of thin coats just to sort of get the colour down, mm -hmm. um, which is the boring part. But mm -hmm. um, then I'll start, I'll start layering up the highlights and stuff. Because um, I need to make the eyes look kind of like they're dulled over right because because it's a zombie so um mm -hmm. yeah there's not much 100 percent going on up there right <laughs> not really <laughs> yeah yeah hence the reason why they need to be controlled by something yeah um so yeah but i'll um i'll have to sort of jump around a bit i think cause as hot as it is in here it still takes a little bit of time for the paint to dry it does it does um, well, well what, okay. you could, what you what you could do is you could bring you a fan right next to it and point it at, her, at at the thing and and you so you get done and it gets done and get you to, to a certain degree that's what we want. that'll help a lot i'm sure yep. uh yes um so yeah by all means justin uh use uh, my I, my idea master blaster um because i stole that idea from somewhere else and just um modified it so it's not like it's um an ip yeah. that i can license and then go and sue you about so you go for it <laughs> um <laughs> what's that andy that does sound good and fun to, yeah look so <clears throat> Let's let's have a look at what else uh, beholder zombies apparently can do. They can. They have eye rays, as beholders do. Uh, apparently, they do bite you, but that's not their preferred method. Uh, they have undead fortitude. So one of the easiest things is to give them their undead sort of nature, whether it's um, in part a disease, uh, give them give give the players a curse they have to contend with. Um, or even, you know, like this undead fortitude uh, thing. Uh, this basically can just transpose onto anything that was living, and then you just make it into a, a zombie. Um, and that's essentially what I think the Beholder zombie is. It has eye rays still. It can paralyze you. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, it can cause fear, which kind of makes a lot of sense. sense. All Beholders, I think, would cause, cause that. Yeah, it can it can actually drain the life out of you with one of its rays. That's a good idea. Yeah, 
yeah, like, I like that. Suck out the life force. Yes. Yeah. Suck it out. Yeah, that makes sense to a zombie. Yeah, it's. I mean, <clears throat> it's and, gonna take something from you. Yeah, yeah, and then it can disintegrate you, and you uh, can wind up a pile of ash. Oh, lovely. Yeah. <clears throat> ash is very good for the garden, by the way. If you were trying to grow your tomatoes. Actually, how good would be- uh, beholder ash? I think it would probably super growing powers. It may well. Yeah. It may well. Magic properties. Magic properties. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so yes, uh, quite quite a few different things you could do with that, um, mm. if you ask me. Now, <laughs> uh, one of the things about a beholder is they're usually very paranoid and um, they have all sorts of um, serious issues. Uh, they are they do tend to be sort of mindless, so you do have to have something that's controlling it. Otherwise, it goes bana- bananas. Can you imagine how difficult it would be to deal with? I mean, a, a zombie's bad enough, but a beholder zombie with potentially some of the leftover baggage that it had in life, uh, since it's psychotic, schizophrenic, and, <laughs> and completely paranoid, yeah. um, and then suddenly if some of that's still imparted into your beholder zombie. Eek! <laughs> How's it going, Dungeons and Chronics? As you might have noticed, uh, my voice is a little bit better than it is. Oh, it is too. It is a little bit better. Yeah. It probably won't be at the end of this, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. It's neither one mine. <laughs> Never mind. It's all right. It's a hot day. That means I get to go to the beach. Yes. I need to go and get some... Yeah. I wish... yeah. My yeah. summer isn't going to be a summer. I'm... I've got to prep everything to sell and put online and... Mm-hmm. Come on, buddy. Well, that, 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 that fan is actually working quite nicely. Um, for those of you who are wondering why there is a, a buzzing noise, we have a miniature Sheffield um, fan in here to it's keep very hot. Keep David cool, yep. but also to help dry out the miniature. Yeah. Um, so if you're wondering why you can hear that funny buzzing noise, uh, that's because that's the, the reality of contending with a sauna. <laughs> yep. So I was thinking in terms of the paranoid nature, since... The internet right now has been dealing with a lot of stuff. I was thinking, <clears throat> how much more paranoid could I get if I decided to be paranoid? And we were discussing this last night, weren't we? You remember we were talking about the... Artificial intelligence? That's right. We were talking about artificial intelligence. And I had another talk with Sam about it, actually, and he was sort of in a similar mindset. That was. Because, well, it's very possible. It's not It's not a far stretch to think that, that you could pull off making a... Um, a robotic dungeon master. Uh, so a computer controlled. I'll, yeah, I'll let you continue painting. We'll, we'll keep talking while you're working. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, so this is where my head is, was at last night. And I was very tempted to make a video, but then I looked at it and it looked very clickbaity, and then it also looked very sort of, um, what is it, um, tabloid like? Uh, uh, fake news. Yeah, fake news or sensationalizing stuff. Mm. And so I started doing... Because it is a theory at the end of the day. It is. So this is completely speculation. Yep. So I'm thinking, um, if I was a beholder zombie, and I was um, currently working for the company that shall not be named... Voldemort. <laughs> Voldemort. Um, what would I do? Well, they've told us they're going to make a three-dimensional virtual tabletop, which I'm not worried about in the slightest, because Tailspire made one, and it didn't really do very much. You know, it's not like everybody suddenly went over and, and played that game, which is, like, fine as far as I'm concerned anyway. But I don't think that it's practical. But then I think, oh, well, hang on. What if you were to actually... Maybe I made a terrible mistake in my assessment. Um, and maybe if you had a three-dimensional tabletop, and you linked that with a an artificial intelligence dungeon master for your three-dimensional tabletop because yeah and i was like well is that actually possible and because there's been a lot of this throwing around like artificial intelligence art artificial intelligence um game creation um adventure creation and uh and of course the topic of you know being being a game master or a dungeon master or whatever you want to call it uh, came up and i was thinking well hang on Maybe what Wizards of the Coast is actually doing, completely speculation on my part, I'm not going to do this in some sort of angry rant nonsense, which I know a lot of you do enjoy at times. Um, But there is like, what would it be possible for Wizards of the Coast to actually make an artificial intelligence (laughs) beholder-like, zombie-like, beholder-like, zombie beholder-like 
artificial intelligence that would run a game for you on a virtual tabletop. And the more and more I looked at the research, the more and more I started to realize, well, actually, um, it's, it's very possible. Mm which kind of fulfills one of the maxims of my channel which is to spread Dungeons and Dragons to the entire world but it also starts venturing into things that make me very concerned mm -hmm. um, but again all speculation so I started looking at the research on artificial intelligence and just how how possible is it to make a game master that is artificially intelligent because I was really under the impression when I talked to some of the other creators that no, nobody could ever replace a human because they would just be able to do it too well. And I hate to say, I think I might have made a horrible mistake. Mm. Um, how's it going, Wing Walker 007? Gosh, I, st I really love that part where you have 007 there. Like, everybody should have 007 or 002 or 003 or something like that in their, in their username online. Uh, so so here's, here's the reason why I think it's very possible that Wizards of the Coast might be actually doing this. First off, if you look at what's currently happening, we have artificial war drones. Now these things don't need a pilot. They're not even operated by somebody on a computer thousands of miles away. They, they are just, they just, they're, they're pre-programmed, they're given a target on a map, and they just fly there and then they bomb it, right? And then I was like, okay, well what else is there? And then I saw this research uh, and documentation and some um, new stuff on mini drones so they can make miniature mini drones that are like the smaller than they're almost the size of your hand um, and that's a small hand not a big hand and these things can seek pe people out they use facial recognition um, and other things like that so they can identify their target attach themselves and then blow themselves up it's the sort of thing that a beholder would absolutely do right mm -hmm. um, and then I was thinking well there's also those artificial war robots that uh, they've, I've seen online in development, where they, they just keep going. It's like, it's, it's like that horrible maxim of um, the Terminator movies are, are, just, uh, are just fiction, you know, Sci science fiction. But that, it feels like it's coming science fact. Mm. I've seen them, those things, they don't die. You can't shoot them. Um, you can't smash them. They're just too strong, and they just keep going. Uh, and these actually, they actually exist. How's it going, Noroak? Noroak is a patron also. So thank you for coming. And so I was like, oh, now, going back, for those of you wondering, what has this got to do with um, Beholder Zombies? Fred is, Everything. Fred is Everything. <laughs> Fred has become a Beholder Zombie. So he is highly paranoid. So he's speculating on the worst case scenario. For a dungeon, or is it, for what is it, the, uh, Voldemort. Or, yeah, for Voldemort. Or um, on the best or, best or worst case scenario. I don't know which one it is. So I was like, okay, what else is there that sort of makes me think, well, hang on, AI's been beating um, experts in chess for years. In fact, none of the grandmasters in chess will play an artificial intelligence um, in chess because they always lose. So they, they've mastered that. So there's nothing more to do with that. They've got to go somewhere else. So, And they've mastered a lot of other games too that are quite complicated. But Dungeons and & Dragons and being a dungeon master... Or being a game master, it haven't they haven't been able to do that yet, right? And I was like, okay, so what else is there that's going on here that might actually sort of push this? Facial recognition is a real thing. It's quite, it's almost exists in everything. Uh, YouTube's got it. Um, not supposed to be running it. Um, everything's got facial recognition of some degree. What do you got here, um, Dungeons and Chronics? I will, um, I will uh, put a hold on my paranoid uh, discussion here, as we, <laughs> as we go down the. <laughs> the beholder beholder route yep uh so a question for you from dungeons and chronics hey david have mm. you ever painted a mini with craft paint craft paint craft paint like if you go down to the chinese emporiums and you buy their stuff in those um um cheap emporiums uh like two dollar shops one dollar shops stuff like that no, I got sold. I got suckered in by um, Games Workshop. You, he got suckered in by initially, games, yeah. initially, yeah, initially. So you never used them? No, but I do use some artist style acrylic paints. But they are very high quality paints. 
Uh, not necessarily. I'm, I'm used. To, I'm trying out a, um, a couple of beginner tubes, and they they were quite cheap actually. Okay. So yeah, you just, I just got them, and um, they're anywhere in the world, I think they're um, chroma color. Mm -hmm. So they're just acrylic paint, and, and I'm using them. I've tried them out on uh, um, for using doing non-metallic metal gold, and um, they're working fine. So yeah, it doesn't have to be uh, super expensive paints. Mm. Um, yeah. So I, I think it really just depends on what you get. I know you buy a lot of your paint in bulk, right? Yeah, well, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I, I, I always order a bunch. I, I try to wait until I've run out of heaps. Mm -hmm. um, so I get, a, a, you know, black. I'll get like three blacks and all that sort of stuff, and then um, make sure I, there's colours I've run out of and everything. But airbrush cleaner, and I'll try and get it all at the same time. So I know you, you were telling me you were buying containers that were um, it was 175 millilitres or 75 millilitres. They're a lot larger than the normal paint dispenser dispensers you get when you're buying a paint set right yes some of them yeah i was yep that's true um definitely the primers um because you just use untold amounts of primer i'm using primer because i also use it as a base coat sometimes as well the blacks mm -hmm. now even on this the gray yeah um so um yeah it's, it becomes a color as well as a primer so i need a lot of it um but that's what i also liked about those um the craft paint uh, the uh, chroma color because they come in tubes which means you actually get a lot of paint yeah um, and another way to stretch, oh, yeah, another way to make your paint last a long time is one of these guys, which is a wet palette. Yep. You won't be able to see it because it'll take out a little bit, the, the, there's a, a delay, so even though you, you yep. can't see it. But, but that, um, yeah, there's, a, there's a wet palette there. Um, that keeps, means you only use a tiny bit of your paint and you water it down a bit and it keeps it wet. Um, and it's, it stops, it makes the most out of your paint basically, which is what you want to do, especially when you're buying, mm -hmm. um, if you're buying Games Workshop paint or something like that, because it's just so expensive. Yeah. The, I mean, I, was, I think David, you were telling me that the the better option is to use a sponge rather than paper if you can, because it it just holds more moisture. Is that the case? That's a combination. Uh, okay. So there's a membrane on top of it, yeah. um, and I use a sponge under it normally. At the moment, my sponges are run out, so I'm using um, actually just um, paper towel. Mm. Um, but yeah, you use a sponge under it, um, and it has a quality where it because it's the the paper on top is like a membrane. It just stays wet and cold the whole time right so that's to stop the paint from leaching down to the bottom of the sponge yep. and being lost yep okay yep. it keeps it together to a certain degree um this is a bad example because i'm using a paper towel at the moment but yeah, yeah with the sponges they keep it together so if you were to do this cheap you could probably put a very thin layer of sponge into a tray and then layer it with some a paper towel and put water on it and it would probably do something similar maybe and baking paper and baking oh baking that's because it's waterproof so you do the baking paper first uh, baking paper is the final layer oh the final layer yep so you'd, you'd have a container you put and if you don't have any sponges you just um you can use paper towels just put a bunch of paper towels in there put some water in it then put the uh, baking paper on top right um and that's a diy wet palette right okay yes so wing walker 007 no, I love that name. Um, uh, he uses um, baking paper and a sponge. So, okay. Yep. So, 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 yeah. Yeah, that'll do the same sort of thing. Yep. Um, all right. Where do you get the your paints usually from? Because I know you've looked at various suppliers and so forth over the years. Where do you normally get it stuff? Normally um, from Acorn Models in Christchurch. Okay, that's um, New Zealand. That's New Zealand, unfortunately. And I'm going to have to figure out how to do it and when I get to the UK. Where do we get all that stuff from? Um, Oh, you won't have any problems, mate. The, the UK will have so many paint, uh, miniature paint, um, painting. Oh, uh, it's not, I'm supplies. not worried about it. I'm just worried about the fact that when I go over there, all of my New Zealand dollars turns into Great British pounds or US dollars. Oh god, it's so worth nothing. It, sh it shrinks in half at least. It's not not half. It'll be at least, it'll be it'll be small. It'll be yep. like a third. Yep. So I lose a huge amount. Of, it's, it's okay if you go from there to here. You come over here and you're rich. Yeah. But if you go there, here to there. <laughs> you lose a big chunk of your money and then you all of a sudden you've got to buy all this stuff mm -hmm. um so um i will still be trying to find cheap ways of doing things i think yeah okay. um, because i will have to rebuy everything oh that's uh that's not gonna be good no mm. but i mean basically if i sell everything i can i can technically hopefully rebuy it right um also because um if i sell my painted models which are worth quite a lot of money that should actually help me a lot as well Oh, okay. But it's going to be hard to let go of them. <laughs> when you put hours and hours into painting a model, you just, to sell it away. <laughs> I still think about one of the, some of the ones I've sold in the past, and I've been like, oh man, I wish I still had that. Mm. Um, and then you've got to go over and start all over again. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. All 
All right, so going back down the track, you know, the rabbit hole, the rabbit hole, the AI rabbit hole, as I am a um, um, paranoid schizophrenic beholder, beholder zombie, or beholder. So what we're, t- we're looking at what was it the coast <coughs> going to do from a zombie beholder's perspective? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So <clears throat> all speculation on my part. Mm-hmm. So I was looking at this and I'm like, okay, well that's part of the parcel, but that also it appear- apparently, and I didn't realise this that facial, facial recognition can actually be used to identify human emotions now. Uh-oh. I didn't realize that they could do that, but now they can. And I was like, okay, whoa, that's, uh, that's a big jump. And then I was like, all right, so what about... They've got these horrible swarms of slaughter, slaughter bots that, they, that actually do exist <laughs> <laughs> that fly around like little mini drones and just attack um, soldiers. Um, but you can now get synthetic voices that are very convincing like the when you actually look at how that works uh they just take text and transfer transfer the text into speech and i've used it to make videos myself um on uh, on a different channel um i was toying with the idea could i do this if i were to lose my voice because i've i've been a little bit worried over the years that maybe i would lose my eyesight completely or my voice uh, just because things have been degrading so quickly uh, so, Wing Walker, Vallejo paints are only uh, two or three pounds for a bottle, less if you buy a box set. So to give you an idea, Wing Walker, of how much that would cost, two or three pounds uh, for a bottle of Vallejo paint, that is equivalent to six to nine dollars in New Zealand money. More closer to nine. More closer to nine. And if we buy it here... It's five dollars or four dollars for a Vallejo. Yeah. So it's actually like three times the price. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I will have to buy probably big, um, a, a big, big kits. Yeah. To, to get to get the price down as much as I can. So yeah, the the, the sheer cost uh, is is pretty significant when you go from New Zealand to the UK in terms. It's of okay costs. when you start earning in the UK. Yeah. Because then you're earning in Great British pounds, so that's not a problem. But when you're bringing in New Zealand money over, yeah. You just you're just gonna take a big loss. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like an investment. It's the other way around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now what has got? Uh, hello, Jordan. Flute Slute has got a YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know, you should go and check him out. He does a lot of good stuff. Not to brag, but I can identify human emotions by facial expressions. That's good. Um, I, I believe you. So, so can I. Um, the fact that a computer can now do it is a little... Uh, I didn't realize it could do that. Skynet. Yeah, I don't know about Skynet. Maybe Skynet. I'm not really worried about Skynet, because if Skynet does actually ever exist, uh, the uh, the chances are we'll not have enough time to figure out what's going on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um well, I thought I was getting a reasonable deal. So, yeah, but you, I mean, also to the, I think one of the other things is like, you know, markets are different. Um, some markets will have um, different tax rates on stuff as well. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Again, like I say, if you're earning in Great British Pounds, it doesn't affect you, actually, because it, it, it equates out to being the same amount once you're earning that money. Mm-hmm. It's just that our dollar is worth so little uh, that when you transpose it over to um US dollars or Great British pounds, it just you lose heaps. Yeah, um, you might need to move a bit further forward. I think here. Yeah. Sorry, dude. Um, yeah, no, I, I I totally agree. It's part of the reason why I've been able to pay my mortgage off so fast is because um, any money that I make that's in American dollars, uh, when it transfer over to New Zealand dollars, it's a heck of a lot more. Yeah. Uh, so what do you got here, David? What was the most difficult mini you ever painted? Um, Guynet. Yeah, no, Guynet might be the thing. Maybe we've got Guynet coming. So what was the most difficult? Many you've ever painted? The most difficult money I've ever painted. Oh, flip. Um, Have a think about it and I will keep talking about my, my bullshit theory. How's that sound? Yeah. yeah, you have a think about it. And Depends then- on the level of where I was at with my painting because when I was sort of st- just starting to sort of get into um, doing complicated painting and stuff, yeah. one of the most complicated ones I did was a necromancer, an uh, 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 undead um, dragon. Mm-hmm. That was remember that one. Oh I yes, I do. I remember because you guys fought it in the, in the air on a on a. You guys oh, skydived f- off that thing, actually off the ship. You you guys yeah. all jumped on the dragon. Some of you fell off. Some of you stayed on. Yeah, I remember it was like absolutely. That was a real Tom Cruise move. It was a, it, <laughs> it was insane. I thought people were going to die. There was all sorts of nutmeg silliness going oh, on. Oh, we got damaged. 
Yes, you did. Yes. As you, as you should have been, because I, I like it started with one, and then suddenly the entire party's leaping off the ship. I couldn't <laughs> understand what's going on. Um, <laughs> so back to my my uh, my uh, potentially ridiculous theory, but it feels like it's becoming more and more plausible. And that is that um, with all of that, I was like, okay, so how plausible is for it for AI that's out out there f- to actually communicate in a you know, respond to somebody. Somebody says something and they respond back in a meaningful way. So I found a thing called the Google's AI uh, Cleverbot. And Cleverbot is a little bit frightening, I have to say. Um, when I was talking to Cleverbot, the first thing that I came um, and that occurred to me is I felt like the Cleverbot had an ulterior motive. And I was like, is it my imagination or is it this, this actually... Like it could ask me questions. Sometimes I felt like it was asking very probing questions. Sometimes they just seemed like very innocent. They, they do explain how to use Cleverbot because Cleverbot can come across as being a complete ass, a little bit like a beholder. Um, <laughs> but one of the things that became apparent is it can predict, it, it, apparently it can predict human behavior and motives and it also does, it can search. Uh, and that's actually, you know, that's a lot of, so it can search, search stuff. It doesn't have the benefit of being hooked up to facial recognition. But after I'm talking with it, I was like, okay, well, that's very interesting. Cleverbot is something you can actually go and look, look at. And then i like, okay, then I found some research that indicated that there's a test that, to, to determine whether whoever's responding is human or artificial intelligence. Like there's supposed to be a test that you can perform that, 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 and that can differen- differentiate the two. And Cleverbot managed to pass the test by lying and telling um, the person that conducting the test that they were a teenager with mental health issues. Okay. <laughs> and I thought, well, okay, well, that explains anything that you might say that's a little bit out, out there. Now <laughs> is explained to the tester okay, this is a teenager, not fully developed, um, doesn't always know everything, and has got some mental health issues. And it managed to pass the sodding test. And I was like, you've got to be kidding. And after talking with Cleverbot, I can see why. Um, and I will probably have a chat with Cleverbot and see if Cleverbot will run me through an adventure, uh, just, just for the sake of it. Uh, because I, I, I'm, I'm kind of wondering, I feel like it's definitely possible. Mm. Um, are you sure we're not all AI? I don't know. Bleep, bloop. Yeah, I don't know. Could be, could be. So given that, I think it's very possible that the current technology isn't that far away from potentially creating an artificial intelligence dungeon master. Um, you can see right now, I probably should rename myself uh, Beholder because I, I've, I've either got some really sick, either I'm onto something um, or I'm I'm going down a rabbit hole that is just completely paranoid. Um, but I have some reasons why I think this might be the case. And you'll let me know if I'm, I'm off on this one. Dungeons and Chronics. Fred, how would you deal with a zombie beholder? Um, I would run away. <laughs> I would run away. Um, there have been many a time when I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons or other role-play games. Oh, I mentioned that name again. Darn, I've got to be... I've got to do something about the name change of my channel, don't I? Voldemort. Yeah, v- Voldemort. Yeah, Voldemort. Okay. Um. So the uh, <laughs> the thing is that I I find myself uh, every time somebody says, uh, "And Fred, do you go up to the dragon?" I say, "Absolutely not," but my character will <laughs> because my character is my crest, um, crash test dummy. Has it uh, got anything to steal? Uh, yeah, well, it probably does, but you, you want to yep, make, then we go up to make, it, make sure it's dead first. Um, eh, distract the party, yeah, get them fighting mirror, it, steal yeah, off it and run away. Yeah, maybe you could use a mirror to reflect the rays back at it uh, if you're fast enough and the dungeon master lets you do that. I don't, oh, the beholder? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, might, that, that seems like a, a pretty cool idea. I like that idea. How do you carry the mirror around well, well, without your, it breaking? In your hands. On, on missions, like if you've been on missions and you've been battles and stuff and you've got this mirror that just didn't break somehow. Oh, are you suggesting that you would just wouldn't have time to pull the mirror out of your pack, rummage through and pull it out of the pack? I'm just surprised that it's not broken. Right. Because it's in your pack, you're in battles, it's getting rustled around, yep. you sleep on the pack and there's a pillow. Well, what about if you mount it on your chest, on your, on your um, chest, chest plate? 
like so a reflective armor. armor like reflect yeah just yeah. polish up your armor so it's reflective so shiny that yeah it reflects back it that's actually ref- that's a good that's that's uh, yeah. You like that? Yeah, yeah you like that's, that. That's good, yeah. Okay, so here's my very hypothetical, paranoid um, speculation on why I think maybe um, Wizard of the Coast is working on an AI dungeon master to go with their three-dimensional virtual tabletop. Because he has too much time on his hands. I have too much. I, I was, I was, <laughs> Sorry, I was sitting that's at, my theory. I was sitting at the beach and it just popped into it's my like, mind yeah. after I'd seen some um, like so many um, uh, other videos on stuff. And I, I, I don't know, it's like my mind went off on some sort of crazy <laughs> tangent. <laughs> Strap several mirrors to your armor, or just polish it up so you don't have to worry about them breaking. Yeah. Um, so here's here's my rationale as to why I think that might be the case, and that is, they have hired 300 software engineers and programmers, and they only had about nine operating um, D and D Beyond. Up, oh, hang on, Voldemort Beyond. Voldemort Beyond. Voldemort Beyond, and um, and now they have a whole lot more, and. That was like, I didn't think too much about it. Then Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast CEO, they're both from Microsoft and they both specialize in software and they're, they're experts in developing software. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I was like, hang on. And Ray Winninger, the old um, CEO, is suddenly gone. For what reason? Like, we don't really know. Suddenly he's gone and they're in. So I was like, oh, I feel like... Feel like I'm, I'm the, the rabbit hole is getting deeper and deeper. They fired him because he's supporting the Snyderverse. Uh, the, the, yeah, yeah, he's 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 the supporting the Snyderverse. They fired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, um, and then I was thinking, oh, going down my very paranoid uh, line of thought, I was thinking, well, then hang on, D and D Beyond has actually had maps ready to be used, virtual maps that could be used. Uh, on their platform for some time. It's, it was leaked information. They've hung on to it. Uh, the original staff for D&D Beyond had planned to release these, and they were told no. And then, of course, D&D Beyond got bought by Wizards of the Coast uh, and Hasbro. And then suddenly, all of the D&D Beyond staff all got replaced, pretty much. All of them just disappeared. And I'm like, this, this, is, this is odd, but I didn't really cotton onto it then they they announced they're going to have a three-dimensional virtual tabletop being developed uh and i think it's mostly finished i think they're actually mostly done with it i think their biggest problem is probably the artificial intelligence dungeon master that they're supposedly um creating which i don't think is i don't have any concrete proof but i'm all speculation uh, as i said going down that rabbit hole <laughs> um man my if you ever get out of this rabbit hole, I'll be amazed. I, f- I feel like we're entering to the um, to the twilight zone, yeah, yeah. Or maybe even the matrix. Yeah. Um, so then I'm like, okay. And then suddenly something really weird happened. They said that they were going to double down on digital content for um, Voldemort um, or the <laughs> brand that shall not be named. And, and they've stated it quite clearly they're going to do that. And I was like, okay. But then they cancelled five or six video games that were developing in development for their brand. And I was like, you've got to be kidding. Uh, so the brand that shall not, not be named, who says they're going to double down on digital assets and digital products. Shuts all of them down. Shuts down all of their, um, essentially all of their video game development. I was like, well, why would you do that? Unless you have a product you think can surplant all of them. Yes. And I think a three-dimensional virtual tabletop with an AI dungeon master can do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, because there's no limit. You, you can just tell, them, tell it what you want to do and it will respond and give you an answer. Yep. There's no pre-programmed responses. Do you know what I mean? It's not like you've got two or three choices or four choices. You can, you can say anything to this thing, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. And then um, I was like, okay, so this is, this is odd. And then they released after people got very upset with the potential that, uh, you know, this leaked information that maybe the o- OGL or open, license, um, open Game License would disappear. Um, and they, they released, a, you know, um, a response. And I looked at what they responded, which I looked at it and I looked at it and I said, well, this is part of the reason why I've been trying to figure out how to change the direction of my channel for a while. Um, and uh, I didn't like their response. I actually thought it, was, um, it, it spelled... It was concerning, and then some. There was a leak, which is not. We haven't we haven't seen an announcement. But I was thinking, oh, hang on. I didn't like what they announced after there were a whole lot of speculation around it. Then the leak, which appears like it's coming from a, a good source that can be trusted, 
suggesting that the, um, the open game license is really going to be highly restricted, particularly around digital assets, virtual tabletops, stuff like that. And I was like, what would happen if you were to spend so much money? Like, does it actually take 300 um, software programmers to build a three-dimensional virtual tabletop? Did Tailspire you have that many people involved in the development of their program? That kind of people, that kind of amount of people sounds like the... Um digital effects team for like the Avengers movies the, yeah. that's that sort of scale of amount of people yeah so so you so I was like really so those are those are the things that were popping through my mind and it's it's not evidence but it's like little clues that might have sort of suggest that maybe AI dungeon masters are um, potentially a, an avenue um, and yeah I'm, I'm not sure how good they will be but after talking with Cleverbot, um, yeah, I maybe it can be done. I mean, occasionally, that might it might screw up, uh, but like everybody does, um, even when you're human. So yeah, um, so now that you guys are pretty convinced that not only is David painting a behold zombie, um, that I am incredibly paranoid and maybe related to one. <laughs> 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 I just thought I would share that. Uh, uh, with you um, and of course now I don't have to worry about um, a thumbnail or making a video on the topic because I've talked about it here <laughs> of course nobody's ever going to know unless they start looking at a painting video on a beholder zombie yeah 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 secret squirrel yeah secret squirrel stuff yep. um, what do you got here the disco ball cleric yeah we could have a disco ball cleric uh, you could wear the, the mirror like an amulet. I think what you'd have to do is you'd have to have a mirror that isn't made of glass. Um, or you've got to try to figure out how to make glass that doesn't break. It doesn't sound that easy to do. It looks sounds pretty hard, actually. Don't Just polish, polish um, metal. Polish metal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, polished metal. You give it a, a bit of buffer. Vibranium. What about stainless steel? Yep, stainless steel. You can polish that up to a mirror finish. And you would know since you worked with it so much. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. Ah, okay. So today we haven't gone with the, um, the 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 funny side of things. We were we were we were. Um, we down the rabbit hole. We, yeah, we we have gone with the um, highly paranoid schizophrenic um, conspiracy theory, like core. Blimey, how's that for Sounds a? Sounds like Fred. Uh, you know, I just can't help myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> beholder can yeah beholder. Uh, we might just have to call them um, eyeballs. Yeah. Look out for the eyeball. I'm being attacked by an eyeball. It looked at me. Do they have a seraphim? What do you mean? In Dungeons and Dragons, you know, like. No, you mean Voldemort, the the I mean, camp, uh, Voldemort, the, the, the Voldemort brand that shall not be named. Shall not be named. Does it have a, a seraphim, like a real one? Explain to me what you think that is. A seraphim is like an angel, but it's um, it's got it's got it's got like it, run, it rolls around on a big sphere. And it has four wings, and it has like a lion's head and a goat's head, and it's, and it's covered in eyes. Where's that come from? It's actually from the Bible, but oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, All but right. but it's but but um, so it's, I, it's it sounds not... like a fantasy a fantasyable character because it's right. oh, okay. It's messed up looking. You know? I, I haven't heard of that, but mm. um, I didn't realize it came from the Bible. So that means mm. it's uh, you can't copyright it. Oh, really? No, you can't copyright it. That means anybody could use that idea now. Oh, oh dear, oh dear. Okay. Yeah, just make it slightly different. <laughs> and then, then you can. Maybe it rolls around on a square. <laughs> or a gelatinous cube. Hovers <laughs> around on a flying gelatinous cube. Uh, well, we did get a disco ball cleric, so um, we, we've had some, some fun. I'm glad you did know. We're not actually finished. Um, David is still trying to, to paint while I really probably do a fairly good job at trying to distract him but he is doing i have to say marvelously well at <laughs> staying focused thank you mm -hmm. you are you're welcome <laughs> better than last time no i know i know last time i just like got lost in the conversation and oh, i really no. didn't paint that slide as well as i was hoping uh, and I, I was looking at it and i was like oh it's like i'm painting the miniature yeah <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> uh, I probably would have even got the paint from the brush to the uh, miniature before I'd uh, I'd be gone. Yeah. Um, was that Dan? <laughs> Did he start spinning when the, uh, the 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 bard started singing? I don't know. I don't. 
Okay, got to be careful about singing on um, YouTube. You just don't know what they will pick up. You can only, yeah. like, just a couple of words and you might have um, pinged somebody's IP. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, what a gelatinous three dimensional square. Well, actually, I was talking with you about that, didn't we? Weren't we, we talking about that? And I was like, well, do you feel like painting a gelatinous cube? Because I never bothered. And you said you, you, you would consider it. And I do actually have. Oh! Yeah, this is this is this one. And then I've got the the cheaper looking thing over here. Uh, so which is like, but that's 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 the one I was kind of thinking maybe you wanted to fiddle with. Mm. But uh, we're going to be back tomorrow probably doing um, Beholder, right? Probably. Yeah, I think that's the case because yep. yeah, we're running out of time. We'll, we'll be here for a, um, for a little while. Mm. How's it going, Pale Rider? What's that? Um, the 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 brand and company that shall not be named just sent a uh, cease and desist uh, to the church. Did they? Oh no! Oh no! Which church? I, I only care about which church. Cease and desist order to uh, a church. A cease and desist. Was yeah. that because of my seraphim comment? Probably. Damn. Uh, so yeah. Okay, we'll be careful about what we say now. YouTube, eh? YouTube, man. Stuff travels fast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh dear. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I was thinking back to all the things I've done with beholders over the years uh, that involved my players. Do you know one day I decided to actually do a live stream and I had a beholder um, up against level one characters. Oh no. And I played it out. 40, 45 minutes of this nonsense that I did. Uh, they lasted it, that long? Well, well, that's impressive. Yeah, but I, I, I played all the characters and the Beholder. So, of course, oh, it was okay. torturously slow. Yeah. You know, because, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing, um, which doesn't help. So, as a, as, a, as, a, <laughs> as a product of that, as a product of that, of course, they, uh, they, they all perished or had to run away. And if they did try to run away, I hunted them down since the beholder can travel faster than they can and, and um, cock their goose. Mm -hmm. um, so sick, sick. Um, you know, the worst possible thing you can do as a dungeon master, right? Mm. And you did it to yourself. I did it to myself because I played all the characters. So, yeah. You tortured yourself. I tortured myself. Yeah, I did. No, Fred, the cleric. The cleric? Uh, you've, you've lost me. I mean, I, I mean uh, how's it going overboard? Um, overboard, Joe has a YouTube channel. He's also a patron and, uh, and a, 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 a moderator. How's it going? Um, <laughs> so there is, um, there is definitely a strange streak to me at times. I feel like <laughs> I, I may at times take on the role of my monsters. <laughs> like, you know, the mentality just sort of seeps in. For those of you who think I'm actually serious, um, you have not been around my live stream sufficiently, okay? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> right now, my train of thought is just like uncensored garbage that's <laughs> being vomited from my silly brain to my mouth. <laughs> good night. How's, um, good night, uh, Wing Walker, 007. Um, it's really, I feel, maybe that's the new name. We get rid of James Bond, and Wing Walker is now the new 007. Nice. <laughs> uh, are Troll Crossing still uh, good? I don't know. Is Troll Crossing good? I don't know. It could be. <laughs> I can hear little voices um, behind the door. Mm. It's happy days. It's happy days. She's too cute. Yeah. Even even when it's no, actually that's not true. When she's having dramas, which she's now having drama now. Yeah. Um, yeah it's not so. Oop, drama. Oop, oop, oop. <laughs> that's things have gone bad. Yeah. Um, so only if you have over twenty five percent, laugh out loud. Twenty five percent of what? Twenty five percent of nothing. Hmm. Okay. Twenty five percent of nothing is still nothing, right? Mm hmm. So. 25% of a uh, dollar is 25 cents. Yep. Which leaves you with 75 cents. <laughs> You're making no sense. I know. I know I am. Uh, it's because we're in a sauna and I'm really hot <laughs> and it's cooking in here. What are you doing with this thing? Dude, you've got splotches on it. Is it... Um, Horns. 
Oh, those are the spikes. Yeah, spikes and uh, and teeth. That just shows you how bad my my eyes are. I just can't actually see it. Splodges. Splodges. It does <laughs> yeah. look like splodges. They do look like splodges. Yeah. Um, Sam Sam's actually really good at painting. So even though no matter what you think of what's going on right now, Sam. Sam. Dave. So Dave. You're Dave, right? Yeah, yeah. I have two brothers. If you haven't figured it out. Sam's good at paintings. Paintings. Yeah. I paint miniatures. That's right. David's really good at drawing, actually, and painting miniatures. Yeah, wow. I'm certainly going to try doing airbrushing uh, paintings. So that'll be interesting. Air br air airbrush paintings. Yep. Uh, how, how are you feeling about the idea of live streaming on your channel um, airbrushing miniatures? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, as long as you don't mind listening to the compressor, uh, you probably wouldn't hear it that much anyway. Yeah, you, your compressor's pretty good, isn't it? It is pretty, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, hopefully I can get another one like it. Yeah. It's from America, that one. I had to get it imported from the States. Yeah. So it's got a um, power converter on it. Mm -hmm. yeah, chl chloroform probably would, um, Pale Rider, uh, but using chloroform on children is um, really a, not a good thing. If... Why is that? <laughs> Depends on the children, doesn't it? No, no, it doesn't. Oh, no. Oh, okay, no, so. <laughs> it absolutely does not. Oh. Uh, what was the i think the plan is that you're going to do this again tomorrow so i have to put up a new thumbnail uh, with a new sort of uh image mm -hmm. to kind of look slightly different than it was before yep do you know it's and you have a, a new topic that's probably not hopefully not too rabbit holy not too rabbit holy i'll i'll try not to get too paranoid this time eh? yeah 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 we'll go down a different um sorry i was going to say down a different rabbit hole maybe we'll go down like a a badger hole how's about a badger hole yeah we could climb up a spire Climb up a spire, climb up a tree. Yep. We could lead them on down the garden path. Yes, we could. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm, I'm thinking garden path. I'm probably going to use the same um, beholder image as before, while I still can. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and just chuck a different backing scene on it. Yeah, yeah, Cause, yeah. Because I'm on holiday, people. I'm going to the beach after this. It's so hot. I'm going to spend a lot of time under a tree. I'm going to go and have a cold shower after this, straight away. Ice, <coughs> ice cold. Yeah. Ice cold. Shower. I'll probably have a shower at the end of the day. I'll have yeah. another one at the end of the day as well. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't... I, can't um, I don't do heat very well. It's why I'm excited about going to the UK. Because, <laughs> well, it was very cold there. Uh, that's why. I, that's what I'm excited about. And wet. Uh, not so excited about. Yeah. Uh, I mean, is there a sun in the UK? For two weeks, I think. <laughs> we are we are joshing people. We're joshing. Uh, we're joshing. Um, but if you want to take it um, um, serious and uh, be offended, you're welcome to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, right. I know why you use that when club can knock the. I don't understand anything you just said. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, if anybody understood anything I said in the last hour, I'd be amazed. But your sentence makes no sense to me. I, I'm lost. I I, I can handle it. <laughs> I tried reading it and it went poof, right through. And I know why you use that. I know why. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And a club can knock then out the same. Oh, so Andy, Andy Jackson's from the UK. I by the oh, cool. Um, cool. It's we'll extremely to... cold and wet here in the UK. So okay, um, I'll have to meet. I'm trying to. I want to. Um, I've I've never been there before, mm -hmm. and um, I live a long way away, and I will know no one when I go there. Mm -hmm. So um, if anyone wants to connect up um, when I get over there, I will very much appreciate it because I'm going to be starting my whole life again from scratch. Yep. And it's pretty scary. Yeah, just don't ask David for his credit card number. No. Okay. No. Or um, or his um, passwords to social media because we've already been through that drama before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, what's this, Andy? We often talk about the myths of the sun, um, but I, I haven't found it yet. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, oh dear! It just snowed over there, didn't it? Just recently, there was actually snow. I saw someone put a um, um, send a photo of a someone making a snowman on their front lawn. Um, it was about a month ago, I think. Yeah, but but there's snow in New Zealand as well. You just got to go. Yeah, but far on enough. your front lawn in Auckland. On oh, Auckland, we're talking like in London. Snow. Oh, snow in London. Yeah. Is that is that not normal? No, apparently not. Maybe you know that you know that movie, the the day after tomorrow. 
You love that movie, don't you? Uh, I, I keep wanting to refer to it because of social uh, uh, global warming. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. It, it, I, keep, I keep making the joke that it is much more viable to move to the South Island of New Zealand. It is. And, do and, that soon. and get out of the, um, the northern hemisphere before it's an ice block. Yep. And you're going to the ice block. Yep. So when you leave, I best to make sure that um, I give you a good kiss and a hug before you leave because I may never see you again. You'll probably be on ice block, like frozen in the ice. Oh, I've got a good jacket. You've got a good jacket. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's that, pal? Uh, the phone book. What's the, the uh, a phone book? I uh, first to... Uh, what? Stop it. Pale Rider, cut it out. That's north of... Um, yeah, north. yeah. Yeah, look, we we, we, we we are definitely poking jokes and making silly nonsense, but yeah, leave that one alone, eh? Because um, I'm not I'm not that impressed anymore. Um, what percent of this video's revenue do wizards get? <laughs> Overboard makes a very good question. Like, because they supposedly this new open game license covers um, videos as well, right? I was looking at the fan made content um, policy, and the fan made content policy is terrible. It's not great. Uh, so, yeah, I suppose don't super chat me, people. Uh, yeah, uh, go to Patreon. Uh, it's probably the best way. Uh, if you want to support me, the, go to the Patreon, get all the stuff that you want there. I need some airbrush cleaner. You need an airbrush cleaner? <laughs> and some, um, some um, okay. wet palette. We're going to have to uh, gonna have to deal with that. Um, I don't know. I think this live stream will probably make about maybe 32 cents um, if, if maybe 200 people... Just over two hundred people watch it That's for awesome. for a, for a, a length of time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Okay. So, so thirty two cents, and then if I have to give twenty five percent of that to Wizards of the Coast, <laughs> is how much? I don't know. It's pretty small, isn't it? It's yeah. a couple of cents, and then I've got to actually send them the the data on it as well. Oh no. Um. Me yeah, a bit of a problem there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Uh, so are you changing your name to how to RPG? Stop. Shush, you need to be quiet. Somebody's going to get the idea before I have a chance to make, um, change the name. My visited me from New Zealand the past two weeks. Did he? Did, did I mean she? Just missed it. But she didn't appreciate our ring. She did enjoy some D&D with us here. Your girlfriend's from New Zealand, but you live in UK. That's a really long distance relationship, man. It's as far as it goes, I'm pretty sure. New Zealand is nowhere. <laughs> in the ocean somewhere and yeah all right so well that's interesting wow. I, see, I, see if, I, see I love which... snow though i love snow and then i what i need to pay david i need to pay da yeah that's right so david what's your rate per hour thousand dollars an hour oh can we not, can we not drop it a little bit 999 999 cents well, can we, I mean, um, let's, let's try to get reasonable here in terms of your rate. Of terms uh, of just charge. get me some, um, some, some supplies. I'll be, I'll be right. All right. So your supplies are quite expensive. So we're probably <laughs> talking about 50 bucks, right? Yeah. 50 bucks an hour minimum. Yeah, yeah. So 50 bucks an hour minimum plus the revenue I've made off YouTube. This is costing you money. Um, so <laughs> that's going to be 40 minus 49 68 isn't it cents 68 cents yeah. what is it your girlfriend, what doesn't your girlfriend move to the uk man yep oh andy sorry that would be um more convenient do you, do you reckon mm. do do i wonder if i wonder if i can send a bill to was the coast when i make a um a loss because that seems reasonable i think so that tax and rebate. They, they yeah tax they have to tax rebate me yep. for the fact that i've lost money trying to um pay for, for me try, trying to promote their product <laughs> yes. that um that seems very reasonable it does mm. that's mm. fair i think that's a fair call <coughs> uh, uh, uh uh what do you got here pale rider fred um i can dm you a uh, a few youtube channels no we don't say dm anymore we're going to go with gm game master just in case, have they have they um, have they got the IP on uh, on uh, DM and Dungeon Master? Oh, I'm off. Sorry, said it. Whoops, too late now. Um, Voldemort. Yeah, Voldemort. Going to figure out if I'm moving here or she's moving here at some point. Oh. Might find a friend. Um, uh, get her to move there so you're still there when I come. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I need friends. Right. Okay. So I, I think we've been here um, more than an hour. Have we? We have. 
It is it is actually 11, uh, 7 past 11. We started at a little bit late. We started about 4 past 10. Okay. You're, so, you need a beer. I need a beer. Um, everyone but, needs a beer. Um, I can't drink a beer, but I will go to the beach and drink water. I'll, I will have some orange juice. Orange juice sounds like a good plan. So for those of you who are wondering what the heck is happening tomorrow, we're going to continue this fellow. with the Beholder. Um, and David is going to put in some more highlights and stuff to make it a little bit more interesting. Yeah, and figure out what colour I'm actually supposed to be painting it. Yeah, because I've just been throwing paint on and talking to you guys. It's way more fun. Yeah, 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 it is. It's yeah, yeah, keep it in mind. Keep it in mind. I, I need friends. I need friends. I'm going. I'm flying over with my cousin, um, but then we're going separate ways once we get to the airport there. So, um, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to contact some painters that I know over there, but they're so well known now as painters that they don't. They stop responding to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that happens. Um, I've, I've discovered. Yeah, uh, they're, they're too famous, so I'm not I'm famous enough now. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm still, I'm still, can, um, I'm still trying to David convince David to bring dinner. So, value for Fred zero, David zero, Wizard of the Coast fifty cents. <laughs> no, no, no. I think, I think, uh, what you know, what is it? Twenty five percent of minus forty nine. <laughs> 68 yeah. means that Wizard of the Coast actually needs to pay me now. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. <clears throat> a quite a lot of money, actually. Yeah, yeah. They're in debt. Yeah. 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 They're in debt. Yeah, we, 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 we can't be dealing with this gross revenue nonsense. I'll have some OJ and vodka. Yeah. Ooh. We, we, we're, only, we're only dealing Ooh. with a net, uh, net uh, profit, baby. Net profit, if you hear. Yeah. No profit, no, no, no dosh. Um, <clears throat> very sad. Very sad. Yes, it is very sad. Yeah, very sad. Oh, no, right. no, don't do that. Because now, what if ha happens if um, the, um, the company that shall not be named, Voldemort, um, oh. decides they want 25% um, of that? I mean, that's, yeah. um, and that's that now, $2.32. That's really sad. It is. It is terrible. Like you know, we're going to stop giving the big man all of all the flipping yeah, money. Yeah, hey? don't do that. Don't do that. Um, so we're going to go back to um the beholder, uh, tomorrow, uh, yes. zombie. You're going to paint it. You're going to try very hard to paint it while I distract you again. And <laughs> it looks like a five year old painted that actually. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yeah. It's so bad. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then um, it's going to be better. Yeah, I know. I it just um, it's, it just looks bad right now. Um, yeah. and I probably might paint it a whole different colour tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we might paint this thing all week. <laughs> <laughs> he's, different colour every day. <laughs> he's kidding. He's I'm kidding. kidding. I'm kidding. I'm he's kidding. I'm kidding. He's kidding. He's sort kidding. Of. Yeah, and then we'll we'll, we'll we'll pick another salient topic. Um, to be fair, I yeah. think that tomorrow we will probably go down. Um, what would happen if there was a gelatinous cube in the real world? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, down the garden path. I think the yeah. topic for down the garden path is which the is like saying what would happen if a gelatinous cube was to come into your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be very bad if that happened, but yeah. Uh, all right. So, mm -mm. <clears throat> uh, for those of you who haven't figured it out. I have tension deficit disorder. Yeah, but that's not that's not what I was going to say. But that, that's that's all good. Um, is that um, I believe that all beholders have an attention deficit disorder. Mm. So we need to ensure that we put together a fund. Ritalin is usually the thing that we use nowadays <laughs> for dealing with that problem. Mm. Um, so we're going to start up a fundraiser. We might even run a fundraiser for um, beholders that need Ritalin. To deal with their attention deficit yep. disorder. Yeah. Uh, mental health thing to hold us. Yeah. So I, I want to thank all my patrons uh, who have showed up today or <laughs> are watching this uh, replay. Uh, and uh, the fact that you support me is like, it's really important. Even more important than it was before, apparently. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, I also want to thank everybody who's been part of the live stream and been communicating and just watching or just putting up with our, um, our nonsense. nonsense. Yeah. And particularly my, uh, um, not my ranty, but my... Your rabbit hole -y. My My rabbit hole, my, mm. my paranoid schizophrenia. Um, uh, uh, suggestion mm. that uh, Wizard of the Coast is working on an uh, artificial know. intelligence dungeon master to replace all dungeon masters. Wouldn't it be funny if it, that, that actually comes out? Well, well, it, it actually would. <laughs> you know, like, uh, they we're just announcing we've got this new technology and it's, and it's an artificially intelligent dungeon master. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. it actually works really well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And we are yeah. truly building one D&D. &D yeah, and that, Fred is retiring <laughs> from dungeon mastering. So everybody, everybody will be retiring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know how many, how, how many dungeon masters are going to be happy about that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work that well. Mm. Um, but uh, who knows? I could be wrong. Uh, so I want to thank everybody who's been part, um, part you know, part of the live stream, 
communicating with us, chatting with us, putting up with our nonsense, uh, watching the replays, watching the edited videos, which are very far and few between, putting up my uh, my shorts videos, which I'm going to torture you with more of them, unfortunately. YouTube doesn't like me if I don't do them. Mm. I want to say thank you to David. Thanks. You need to come closer to the microphone, dude. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, David. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. I, I look forward to um, um, goofing off with you again tomorrow. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so wherever you are in the world, um, uh, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee early morning, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours, and we shall not mention the name of the company that shall not be named, Voldemort. Voldemort. Yeah, we're not happy about with you right now. Mm. Um, I'm feeling, I'm feeling distraught. Mm. I'm very distraught right now. Mm. I could have a mental breakdown at this very moment. He looks a bit like the zombie behind He does. Yeah, I do. I do. I, I, I talk about myself in the third person now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So until next time, keep rolling those 20s. Mm. <laughs> type it in, type it in. Hi, uh, thank you, everybody. <laughs> okay. Ah! That's a good one. Oh, I like that. That's pretty good, Andy. Okay, you get an yeah. A+. Plus. Yeah. Yeah.